morning, brethren. I recently had the privilege of listening to a speech by General Kelly as he came out to defend President Trump in the latest firestorm, which has been stirred up by the representative, or one of the representatives, to the great state of Florida. I am very, very sad to recognize that so many, and basically all Democrats and liberals, unfortunately, although sometimes Republicans too, seem to think that it's acceptable to blaspheme and denigrate the President of the United States. That goes right along with the belief in the right to denigrate our flag and not respect our flag. What has happened to, to the people in this nation? So I would like to, to, to give you basically, all of you that are not aware of what's going on, basically the basic idea, and then I would like to give you my opinion. So why am I doing this? I am doing this because the people, as General Kelly said, who are empty barrels, who talk a lot and say nothing, seem to be speaking the loudest today. And many hardworking people don't even know what's going on. Well, brethren, when you have an opinion, your opinion counts. This is a spiritual world. And your opinion literally rises and joins with like opinions and forms spiritual uh, powers in, in the spiritual plane. This is going to be a short exhortation. So if you don't understand that, maybe you could find some, some message that I preached that would help you to understand that. So what happened? Apparently we have, we the United States of America, uh, or the, our military, have troops in Africa. I, I wondered years ago what we're doing in Africa. Apparently we have troops all over Africa. It, that didn't make me happy when I first heard about it years ago. This is the first explanation I've heard for it from General Kelly. In case you don't know what General Kelly, he is a retired general, a retired five-star general, and he is the chief of staff to President Donald John Trump right now. And I'm so privileged to have heard him speak because now I have my own opinion of the man. Whether we would ever deviate in our political opinions, I don't know, but I have the highest regard for this man. So what happened? There was a, an ambush, and four American Green Berets were killed, and two were wounded in Niger. Now, most Americans didn't even know we had troops in Niger, but we do. And apparently we have troops all over Africa, according to General Kelly. The reason for this, and, and this was a question that was put to him in the press uh, briefing, was that we have military all over the world training the ind indigen indigenous people of that, con of that country, the indigenous military of that country, to fight terrorism so that we can prevent that terrorism from coming here or prevent the necessity of sending thousands of American troops to these other nations. That's what he said. So there was an ambush. Something went wrong. Um, there was no air cover. I don't know. I can't talk. I can't speak to the, to the military logistics. Okay. Four Green Berets joined. Two were wounded. And unfortunately, they were completely taken off guard because apparently they had uh, run, they had, uh, Green Brace had done this mission, please forgive me if I'm using the wrong words, multiple times. It was a standard mission. And um, they were completely taken off guard. And somehow, unfortunately, one Marine that was wounded was left behind. I absolutely refuse, you know, without strong proof, to believe. I absolutely refuse to malign the names and the character of the other uh, five, or I guess the other five Green Berets, that they left their fellow Green Beret on the battlefield for personal reasons. I absolutely refuse to accept that. Mm -hmm. How outrageous and obnoxious to even suggest it. And to say that 
they did it because the one that was wounded and left was black is, is as far as I'm concerned, you're treasonous. Anyone that is sowing the seeds of race hatred in this country is treasonous. That is an absolutely outrageous statement to make. So I, I didn't want this to be an angry exhortation. I wanted to in, help, I wanted to enlighten the people that are not aware of what's, what's going on and to help you by giving you my understanding to make your own, uh, form your own opinion. So, because it was so, un this attack was so unexpected. But listen, brethren, are we all adults here or are we not all adults here? Do not the United States military die? I mean, there have been thousands, thousands of deaths in Iraq. Unfortunately, I'm so sorry to say that, but thousands of our military have died. Unfortunately, it's not uh, such a rare thing that one would go into shock. Well, I'm very, very sorry that it happened, okay? It's not shocking. It's uh, surprising. So, anyway. But it was unusual, okay? It was unusual because there was not a heavy fighting going on in Niger. So it was unusual. Okay? And President Trump desired to call the either the the, um, the either the, the wives or the parents whoever would be the next of kin of these four men, which he did. And I found out from General Kelly's speech that the way well, first of all General Kelly advised him not to do it. <laughs> General Kelly advised him not to do it, but he wanted to do it. President Trump wanted to do it, so he did it anyway. And the procedure is, which I learned from General Kelly, is that the president just doesn't just pick up the phone and call somebody. There is a pre-phone call. The office of the president calls the next of kin and says the president would like to call and offer his condolences. Will you accept the call? And if the person says no, that's the end of it. But the wife of, of the of one of the four Green Berets who happened to be black, which I'm so disgusted with identifying people by the color of their skin. Um, he was a Green Beret that died in the line of duty. I personally don't care if his skin was yellow or black or green or white. He was a Green Beret. We are all Americans. We have got to come out of this, brethren, because if the individual doesn't rise up above the seeds of race hatred that are, have been and are being sown in this country, we're going, there's going to be a terrible devastation and there will be a terrible consequence for it. And um, I call upon every sound-thinking black person, every Christian black person, and I'm sorry to use that term myself, to, to speak to your fellows and do everything that you possibly can to bring some rational thought into this hatred that's raging in this country. It is most unfortunate and saddens me greatly. So the president, um, his office made up, up the pre-phone call and the wife of the fallen Green Beret um, agreed to take the call. Now I've learned from General Kelly that President Trump had conferred with him before the call, and had, if you, if, you, if, you, if you want to take some time to listen to his speech, it was really very moving and very edifying. President Kelly, um, I'm sorry, Chief of Staff Kelly, answered all of the President's questions. First of all, he said that he didn't think he should call because there was no way you could comfort someone at a time like this. And he explained many things. Uh, to the president, and J President Trump said, what would you say? You know, what would you say? Because, you know, there are grievance officers, I think that's not the right word, but there are grievance officers, there are, there are military officers that are in charge of sending um, our military to the, to the houses of the, of the wives and the parents to deliver that news. You know. uh, so he said, what should I say? And uh, General Kelly gave a, a whole speech. I don't, even, I don't even want to try to repeat the speech. He explained many things to him and told him what he would say if it were, if it were he. 
And the, the salient issue is that this is what General Kelly said in a nutshell. He said, he, he referred to the brave military of the United States. He said, when they enlisted, we don't have a draft army today. We, we have a volunteer army today. When these men and women enlist, they know that they might die. They know what might happen to them. And they decide to be patriots and serve their country. They know that they stand a better chance of dying than someone sleeping in their bed every night in Port Jefferson Station. And, and he considered them the bravest people in the country. He called them the 1% of the bravest people in the country. And he developed that idea that our military are brave. They know that they're risking their life. And I mean, it is now just like our police do. They know what they're up against. They know what can happen. And they are brave and patriots anyway. So when President Trump called the wife or the widow, that was what he tried to express. I haven't heard the president, um, I haven't heard his words in particular. But that was what he tried to express. And that your husband knew what he was getting into. He was a brave man. And and he's now a fallen hero. And, and, and that's your memory, that he was a brave man and a fallen hero. You know, I'm, I'm embellishing. I haven't heard those words. I didn't hear those words. So the, the widow apparently has a relationship with... Uh, with one, with one of the uh, representatives of the, of the House of Representatives of the Florida District, who literally despises President Trump and has, has spoken out against him in a very cruel and ungodly manner. It is just the first time I ever heard this attitude coming from our government was with pre President, uh, I'm sorry, Senator Ted Kennedy. I was shocked that anyone would speak to someone who deserves your respect, President. Our Officers, our national officers, deserve our respect. Even if you don't like them, you respect the office. So this Democrat Party and has, has, has fallen morally and socially to the most unfortunate place. So apparently this young widow um, was a friend of this representative of Florida. And when she heard that, now, now first of all, General Kelly said, most presidents don't call. He said, President Obama never called, and that was not uh, an insult. That was just, you should have the facts. President Obama never called. It was very rare for President Bush or Clinton to call. It was very rare, and, and President Obama never did. So this I don't know about you, but to me, this is an, an honor uh, that the President of the United States wants to, he called all four widows, wants to call you to present his condolences. So the young lady arranged to have the representative, who was apparently an old family friend, and I think her mother, there was another person there, present when the President called. Now remember, the call was prearranged. I, I don't I don't know whether my my own opinion is well she has two children and she's pregnant six months pregnant poor thing okay. I don't think that this widow was thinking to have this representative who was on the record as despising President Trump present with the call I think someone put the idea in her head so this representative was there and her mother. I saw the representative interviewed. CNN did a good job, I'm really surprised, on interviewing this woman who made herself look very bad for anybody that has any moral conscience at all. She made herself look very bad on the interview. So these two women were present, unbeknownst to the president, when the call came through, which it, that's neither here nor there other than that it was, I think it was deceptive. Okay, now. It came out that there were other people, that there were people in the, in, the, in the Oval Office when President Trump called. I don't see that as an equivalency. He's the President of the United States. Everything he does is monitored, okay? Um, I, and this is neither here nor there, okay? Uh, 
was, uh, General Kelly said that he was very wounded and her, the man was obviously seriously hurt. He, he, his own son died in Afghanistan, General Kelly. He thought it was very wrong that these two pe women were present on a private phone call. So the, the representative was saying, well, it wasn't a private phone call. The president had people in his office. You know. So that's neither here nor there. That's the least of it. The, from my point of view, a woman was, pre was president who is the enemy of President Trump, who would use anything that she could possibly use to harm him. That, to me, is more significant than the fact that General Kelly was, personally was very offended uh, that, uh, that there would be people sitting in on this private phone call for such a serious phone call, presenting condolences to the widow of a fallen hero. So the representative didn't like the way President Trump spoke. And she's been belittling him to whoever would listen all over the internet, to the newspapers. It is unbelievable. To me, it is unbelievable. There was, to me, there was only one salient, significant fact. The President of the United States called you. So he didn't use the word husband. He said, your guy, instead of husband. Huh? He said, your guy instead of your husband? Pardon me? You want an apology for that? Pardon me? You don't like the way he spoke? You're on TV saying, if it were you, you would have said it this way? I have a flash for you, Representative. You are not the President of the United States. And this young woman, who's in great travail right now, you know, was victimized by you. I really believe that. Even if she did invite you to sit in on it, I believe she's victimized by you. I don't see how this scandal can be doing her or her family any good at all. <coughs> so you didn't like that he used the word guy. You took, I, I didn't hear the exact words of President Trump, but according to Pre General Kelly, he was trying to express what General Kelly had said. Your husband was a hero. He joined the military. He knew what he was getting himself into. He knew that he could die. And he was a brave man, and I'm sorry that this happened. And this representative from Florida is saying that he was insensitive, that he ins she's saying he insulted the wife. You know, do you think the president, do you really believe that the president of the United States made a phone call to the widow of a Green Beret with the specific purpose of insulting his wife? Are, are you out of your mind? Anyone that can believe that? There is something wrong with you. In my opinion, there is something wrong with you. Will you please reconsider? The salient fact is that this president called when it is very unusual for a president to call. This is a president who was on the record as supporting and loving the military. He called to insult the widow of a fallen Green Beret. I, 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 I don't want to turn this into a... I, I, want to, I want this to be, as I said, edifying to the people who would like to make a decent decision so that your thoughts can join with this cloud of witnesses that is forming on behalf of President Trump. So General Kelly was so offended, he said he could not believe what his ears heard when he came into work and heard what this representative was saying about President Trump. He, he said he couldn't believe it. He was in shock. This is a five-star five general. He said he was in total shock. And then he said that he, he was very emotional about the, the wounded and, and very frank about how he had sent some of them to their death themselves because they did what he asked them to do. So he said he went to Arlington National Cemetery and walked amongst the graves. Because he had to decide what to do. General Kelly, as far as I know, has not come out into the public eye at all. He's been, he's the guy, 
He's the guy that stopped the leaks in the White House. He did the job he was called to do. So he said, walking amongst the fallen heroes, he decided that he had to speak, and he made this speech, and it was incredibly edifying and touching. And he was, he, he, was, he never raised his voice, but he was, uh, he was stoically expressing extreme anger against this behavior from this outrageous woman. And I saw her, her interview in response to what he said. And she said that he lied about her, he, General Kelly. He said something, he, he related in an encounter several years ago where she had behaved badly. And uh, the CNN anchor that interviewed her, when, when, the when the representative said that General Kelly lied about her, excuse me, said he, he didn't have his facts straight. Well, I don't know that I believe the anchor at CNN. But let's say he didn't have his facts straight. I, I, I don't know. Do you call that lying? If you say something to me or about me and you're mistaken, is that, is that, is that uh, whether the term lying about me means that you're like she is, that your motive is to denigrate and destroy. And this is the Democratic Party. I saw Attorney General Jeff Sessions interviewed by Al Franken doing the same thing. He went in like almost a five minute, long, which is long when you're being interviewed by the, by the, um, by a Senate committee, accusing him, accusing him. And then the question came, and Attorney General Jeff Sessions told him off. He said, I've been, I've been serving this government for years. I was your colleague in the Senate. He said, I don't, I don't deserve to, to, to have you impute these evil motives to me. And I told him the first time I ever saw it was with, with Senator Ted Kennedy. It seems to be spread through the whole Democratic Party. It's, it's evil, brethren. You need to understand that it's evil to do something like that. Sowing the seeds of discord is one of the seven deadly sins in the scripture. So General Kelly said that he had to come out and explain to whoever would listen that he had counseled President Trump in, in response to President Trump's request as to how to respond to this woman, how to speak to this woman, to say that your husband is a brave hero. He knew what he was getting himself into. And, and, and General Kelly said, and that's what President Trump was trying to express to the widow, which has now been laid hold of by this senator, this uh, representative from Florida, saying that he insulted, he called up the widow. He has, President Trump has nothing to do with his time but call up widows and insult them. Six month pregnant widows, okay, young woman. He has nothing better to do but then call her up and insult her because she was black, of course. He didn't do that to the three white uh, Green Berets. I'm being sarcastic in case you don't know it. Then I saw some some guest on CNN or MSNBC. Beautiful, beautiful looking black woman. Yeah. And she got up there and said, oh yes, President Trump hates women, and in particular black women. Where are you coming from? Are, are you being paid or are you just that stupid? I'm not sure what it is because I don't even know that woman. I wouldn't recognize her if I saw her again. So this is my response to the representative from Florida okay, and to everybody that's listening. I have a rational mind. I have the mind of Christ. And this is my response to the whole nonsensical issue. Okay. The President of the United States called. That is an honor. Pres President Obama never called anyone. It was a very rare thing. Even if you didn't like what he said, I don't know that I would have been insulted if I were that woman and he said, your guy instead of your husband. But okay, let's say it was wrong. I'm not saying it was wrong. Let's say it was wrong. He called. He called. And everything else is secondary. See? You don't behave like this, madam. 
your behavior is absolutely unacceptable. Even if it was with regard to an unknown person, the behavior is unacceptable. And the CNN anchor said to the representative, well, now that General Kelly explained where President Trump was coming from, do you think you can at least admit that you, you misunderstood his intentions? She wouldn't back down. She would not back down at all. She wanted him, the president, to call and apologize to them. She wouldn't even agree to a reaching out. Well, I'm really glad that she was exposed, and I hope that her constituents see her for what she is. And that I hope, or that I hope that every Jewish person that, that votes for a Jewish candidate because they're Jewish, I, I hope that you don't do that anymore. I hope that every black person that votes for a black can candidate because they're black, I hope that you don't do that anymore. I hope that everybody asks God who is God's candidate. That's how I vote. Who is God's candidate? That's how I vote. I vote the morals of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I rebuke these seeds of race war in this country. I burn them. I burn them and I destroy them in Jesus' name. So, that's the story, but then draw your own conclusion. This was the complaint. The president said, guy instead of husband. And he said something about your husband knew what he was getting into. That's what he did that it started this firestorm. And they're ripping him to pieces on the internet and on TV. So, I just want to thank God for our president. I want to thank God that we live in a free country. Uh, I, I want to thank God for President Trump in particular and everyone that is assisting him in any way. I want to thank God for General Kelly. He really touched my soul. You know, I've been saying, I've said it to you a few times, but I've said it to people privately a lot this last year, that this society that we live in, it's, it's like breaking my heart. I feel it every day, and I thought it was because it's like godless around here. You know, people you know, don't talk about God. You know, it's. I, I thought it was because the you know the, the, the average person is rejecting God. But after listening to to General Kelly, I, I realize it's more than that. It's the whole culture. It's the lack of respect. It's the it's the lack of heroes. It's the lack of appreciation. It's. The, 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 the attitude of such a large portion of the people is so ungodly. It, it presses on me every day of my life. So I learned that from General Kelly, that it's much more bothering me every day that I have to deal with than, than there really are no, isn't much activity from the Christian church. It's more than that. It's the patriotism. It's the respect. It's the honor of everything. That, that we used to hold dear. That's all missing in the culture today. And it presses on me, like an, it's an evil force that presses on me every day. So I now understand myself more. And uh, President, uh, I'm sorry, General Kelly really blessed me with that information and with his own love and appreciation for the young men and women that are in our volunteer army. And he said something that I've always believed, that he said it's unfortunate, in his opinion, that there's no more draft, and that there are many who, uh, many young people who have been uh, deprived of the privilege of learning what it's like to be in the United States military and work with other young people and, and, and serve the country. I don't think we would have as many young people on drugs today if we had that, but that's a whole other issue. So God bless President Trump, and God bless General Kelly, and God bless the United States of America. Have a great day, brethren. I'm going to preach now. Okay. Yes. Tony has a comment. Yes. He said, the widow released a voice conversation of the call. I listened to it. The president was polite. I did not hear any disrespect, insults, or, or a cold-hearted conversation. I'm not sure if it was the full conversation. What I heard was respectful. 
I don't doubt it for a second. <laughs> so thank you, Tony, for that information. It's just outrageous. You know. But what's interesting is, you know, Maxine Waters was on the Drudge today, and she's not calling for impeachment anymore. She's, she's just saying we're going to get rid of him. But she used to be up there every day calling for impeachment. Why do you think she's not calling for impeachment anymore? Because this, this Russian probe proved fruitless. They have no, no, no grounds upon which to impeach him. This is just a, a very unfortunate time in our country. Mm. But we will prevail. I, uh, I asked the Lord the other day, how is this going to end, you know? It has to end in the kingdom of God. It will end. It will end. Americans are going to rise up, and they're going to, and, and they are already, recognizing the evil forces at work in this nation today. You know, the whole world is rising up. Um, Austria, I told you previously that both Poland and Hungary have stood up against the Euro European Union and will not take in immigrants. They will not take in Muslim immigrants. They said, we are a Christian country. We don't want our country changed to Islam. And now Austria has just elected a 31-year-old president that is taking the same stand. So it's the countries that were under the yoke of Russia that have known oppression that are standing up against the insanity of the European Union and the mind control that has overtaken uh, the Christian world. Brethren, I, I noticed the the video of the telephone conference or conversation with President Trump that was released was of a different woman. Okay? The, um, the, the woman who is the center of the controversy by the Florida representative is a black woman married to, who was married to a black man. I saw a picture of him. The woman who, who released the video of her phone conversation is another black woman who was married to a white man. And she videotaped a conversation of President Trump's phone call back in April. In other words, after she heard uh, General Kelly's speech, she wanted to help, and she released her video, which was very kind. So I just wanted to clarify that. The woman at the center of the controversy uh, did not release any video. Okay, God bless you all.